We are celebrating the life of a musical icon, Olivia Newton-John, after she passed away yesterday at the age of 73. Uh, let's go live to our Ross King in LA now. Um, and I'm so sorry for you because you knew her well, didn't you, Ross? And 73 just feels too soon, just too soon. Yeah, uh, absolutely such sad news. And, uh, you know, again, I, I count myself so lucky to have some, you know, great memories of, of Olivia. I first met her at the producer Nigel Lithgow's house out here just not long after I moved here in 2000. And there was just four or five of us here. And the first thing I said to her was, you know, I had your poster on my bedroom wall. And she said, well, I bet you don't have it now. And I said, well, if you sign another one for me, I will have it. And I've got it on my office wall now. She really was everything you wanted her to be, no disappointment at all. She was talented, she was funny, she was beautiful. She really just was wonderful. We had so many laughs together. She was great to film with. Um, you know, we had sing-alongs. Uh, I, I remember specifically a couple of Christmases ago at the home of John Farrer, the man who actually wrote, you're the one that I want and wrote Hopelessly Devoted to You. And his wife, Pat, was in a duo with Olivia back in the day, back in uh, Australia. And we had so many great nights there. I remember my, my nephew, Matthew Yoon was there, Holly was there, my cousin Evie, my brother-in-law Jim and my sister Elaine were there. And Yoon just couldn't believe the fact that we were singing these songs written by the man, John Farrah, with Olivia Newton-John staying there. And also just to say the impact that she had on people. And I think this says it all. We were standing chatting and my sister was across the room and she hadn't realised that Olivia had arrived. And I said to Olivia, you've actually got your back to my sister. When I say to my sister, come over and meet my friend. I want you to turn round. And as she walks across the room, I guarantee she will stop and she will cry. And that's exactly what happened. I said, Elaine, come and meet my friend. And at that point, Olivia turned round and my sister just stopped and cried. And I think it shows the impact she had on so many different people, so many different generations. And, you know, she meant so much to so many different people. So um, as I mentioned, it was so lovely to, to sit and chat with her so many times. One of the last times was when she was offering off, auctioning off for charity some of her amazing memorabilia, you know, the whole Sandy outfit from Greece. And, and we talked about the fact that the love that she was seeing at that time from so many people all around the world. I have felt a lot of love from people and I've felt a lot of prayers from people and they help, they really do work. Prayers and I have people praying for me, I have monks chanting for me, I have, you know, just love coming from people and that means a lot. So I want to thank you, anyone that has sent a prayer my way. And she lived with cancer for a very long time. Yeah, she did back in 1992. She was just 44 years old when she was first diagnosed. And also she was one of the, the first major celebrities to come out and talk about it and living with it. And she was very open about her diagnosis, about her treatment. Uh, sadly, the cancer returned in 2013, then again in 2017, at the time that she learned that it sp had spread to her spine. Uh, she has her own foundation that she started in 2020. And one of the aims is the researching the benefits of plant-based uh, medicine and also improving the quality of life for people living with it. Uh, she's also got her wellness and research centre in Australia. It's weird, I can't, I, it's hard to talk about her in the, in the, the past, isn't it? Anyway, um, she never liked to attempt uh, battling cancer. She always preferred to say living with it. And uh, if you look at this picture, this is one of the, the last pictures. She's surrounded by sunflowers. This was shared in April the 18th, thought to be one of the last photographs. And her husband, John Easterling, final request for donations to be made to the Olivia Newton-John Foundation Fund in lieu of flowers. And also we're hearing as well that there is a possibility that there will be a state funeral in Australia because of all the amazing good that she did in cancer research and the millions that she raised. Incredible, an incredible, incredible legacy. legacy. Loads of really lovely tributes from celebrities around the world. Yeah, and, and you know, fans, you know, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, the fans have been there placing flowers there. John Travolta had one of the most beautiful tributes, finishing it off with, you know, you're Danny, you're John. Uh, Barbara Streisand on social media. Delta Goodrum met Olivia many times, said she was an inspiration. Delta had her own health issues. Uh, and of course, you know, we, we think of so many different memories of her. You know, she was in the Eurovision Song Contest back in 74, representing the UK. But of course, 
a sandy in Greece. That's the thing, isn't it? She was content she was a little too old for the role, but oh my goodness me, did she play it so brilliantly. She reunited with John back in 2002 for a Greece reunion special. And of course, the incredible legacy that she leaves behind, you know, four Grammy Awards, 100 million albums, physical 10 weeks at number one here. You know, it's the legacy of, of a beautiful lady inside and out. Nobody could have said it better. Uh, Ross, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, for, for talking to us about your personal connection with her this morning. And, of course, just, you know, the radiating of the warmth that she had in life. She's such a graceful, graceful woman. And someone else who knew Olivia Newton-John well was Fezzo, fellow Aussie Peter Andre, who is currently, morning, Peter, you're starring, mm -hmm. uh, as, as luck would have it, in the West End musical of Greece. Um, in, I mean, I know that you went on stage last night, and, but I just want to know what she meant to you. And actually, what happened last night on stage uh, in Greece, the show that you're starring in at the moment, because they found out, didn't they, the cast during the break? Yeah. So, first of all, I think, you know, everything that's been said about Olivia Newton-John sounds spot on. You know, she was warm. Very, very rare you meet someone in this industry that is exactly what you hope they're going to be like. Um, exactly what you you pray they're going to be like and she was you know i i met her a long time ago i'll, I'll come back to that but yeah. the show last night um the cast had found out halfway through the show um so when olivia who who is actually playing sandy a, a girl called olivia Moore, when she was when the show finished she had to give an announcement to the audience to say oh, that um uh, the, the sad news and and honestly the audience were in shock um, and it's going to be a very different show from now on for everybody because yeah, all is. those songs so iconic, and but I they you're, represent... You're dedicating yeah. every show now, aren't you, to, to Olivia Newton-John in the West End? For the rest I of the run. I think that's what, yeah. what they're going to do, yeah, and rightfully so. I mean, it's it's just... It's so sad to see to, to hear this because even even though you knew she was battling, she was so brave and so strong that when when the news came, you, we were all in shock. It just, we didn't expect that to happen. Um, she was, from my experience uh, of meeting her a few times, a lovely, lovely, lovely person who always smiled, was always warm and uh, yeah. Very, very sad, very, very sad. And Peter, just as a, as a sense, you know, obviously she was universally adored. But yeah, as an Aussie, yeah. you know, for you in particular, she's just a mega, mega star, isn't mm. she, back home? That's right. That's right. And I remember it. I was five years old when the film came out in 1978 and I wasn't allowed to go watch it. But the next year I was we were emigrating to Australia and we knew we were going and everyone was talking about this film and that there was an Aussie girl in this film. And um, that's what excited us. And when I went to Australia and finally got to see the film, she was not just mine, but many people's idol. And I think not just because she was a great actress and she was beautiful, and but it was just the fact of what she radiated, which is what I think everybody is saying. And there's a yeah. really lovely photograph of Kylie talking of fellow Aussies um, that she posted of her just looking up Olivia Newton-John just with sort of dreamy eyes. And I think, you know, they do say, you know, don't meet your heroes, but actually in her case, it didn't pass, did it? You could meet her and you were never, ever let down. Absolutely. And because my first experience was at a charity event, so, so I met her at the Spina Bifida concert, um, which was a huge charity concert in Australia in the very early 90s. And, I, you know, I was really excited to meet her. And we, we spoke for ages. She took time for everybody backstage. Um, she dedicated a lot to that uh, to yeah. that evening. Um, and... From then, when I saw her again, I thought, I wonder if she would remember me. And, and years later, I was working on, on a song with a guy called Steve Kipner, who I, I think is the one who wrote Physical. And he said, I'm going to call Olivia because I've told her you're here and she's going to come down. I was like, wow. And she came down. And instead of it being just a, oh, hi and out, she sat, she talked. She, I mean, just literally, it's wow. not, it, that is the one person oh. you do want to meet your idol. Peter. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, and, and you're back on stage tomorrow night, aren't you? So, or is yeah. it tonight? Tomorrow night, I think you're back on Perfect. tomorrow. Yeah. Good luck with that, because I think it'll be an emotional one for everybody, especially with your history you. uh, with uh, the great, wonderful Olivia Newton-John. Thanks so much, Peter, for making Thank time for us this morning. Thank you. All right, my love. Thank take you. care. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations, and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now, and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.